Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to deploy a .NET Azure function that's connected to your RavenDB database. Before we start, I'm going to assume you're already familiar with Azure Functions and are using RavenDB in some capacity. You'll also need an Azure account and your RavenDB client certificate to connect, a GitHub account, and .NET 6 installed. You'll also need the Azure Function core tools installed to be able to use the runtime locally. I use Visual Studio Code in the demo, but you can use whatever editor you prefer as long as you have Git installed locally and can push to GitHub. In case you get stuck, there is a how-to guide you can follow. See the link below that provides more details. Let's get started. To find the RavenDB Azure Functions template, if you don't already have it, head to github.com slash ravendb slash templates. The templates repository hosts starters and templates for RavenDB. Find the .NET Azure template you want to deploy and then click the Deploy to Azure button. This opens up the Azure Deployment Wizard that sets your Azure Function resources up for a dynamic consumption plan as opposed to an app service based plan. If you want more control or you'd prefer to use the command line, there is a manual process which is provided in the written companion to the video. This deployment wizard is probably the easiest way to get started though. First, start by picking a resource group or creating a new one, which I'm going to do since I'll be deleting these resources after the demo. Next, you'll see the deployment template has special syntax in these different parameters that compute names for the different resources like the function app name and storage account name. You could either leave these alone or customize them now to names you'd prefer instead. I'll leave them at the defaults. Next, review the changes and then click create to start the deployment. Once the deployment finishes, you'll see the function app has been created. However, if you go to the functions URL, we only see the Azure Functions welcome screen. The wizard only sets up the Azure resources. It doesn't do any kind of code deployment. That's what we're gonna do next. We'll set up continuous integration using the RavenDB template. So on the overview blade, click the get publish profile button as we're going to need that soon. Go back to the template page on this page, there's a clone template command we can copy, and I'm gonna use the PowerShell one. I'll go into the VS Code terminal and paste it in. It's a bit long, but it essentially clones a subdirectory of the repository and resets the repo state. I'm going to change the directory name from my project to something else. Then I will run it, and now we've got a brand new repository initialized with the RavenDB template. I'll add all the files to Git and commit it as the initial commit. I will also open it up in VS Code so we have it ready for the next step. Now we need a repository to push this to, so back in GitHub, I'll create a new repository, give it a name, and fill out all these details. Before we push to this new repo, we need to set it up for GitHub Actions, so I'll go into the Settings, and then into the Secrets and Variables area, because we need a secret to store the Publish Profile in order to do the deployment. The secret name is in the workflow file, so I'll go back to VS Code and then under the .github folder there's a workflows folder and the deployment YAML template, and down below is the secret name, so I'll copy that and then paste it into the name inside of GitHub for the new secret. The value is going to be the contents of that publish XML file we downloaded earlier, so I'll open that inside of VS Code, copy everything inside, and paste that into the value of the secret in GitHub. That should be all we need for GitHub Actions to work. Next, I'll go back to the repository homepage and copy the commands to push an existing local repository to the new Git remote. I'll go back to VS Code, paste it into the terminal, and push. If everything works, we should see a new deployment kickoff under the GitHub Actions in the repo. If the deployment finishes successfully, that means the app got deployed. If it failed, check the job logs to see what the error might be. Double check the secret name and its value if it's a permission related issue. For other issues, see the troubleshooting documentation linked below. Let's verify the function now. If I go back to the browser tab and refresh, it's still gonna show me the welcome page because our function is an API. Back in the Azure portal, I'll go to the functions list and then it looks like our HTTP trigger function is there. I'll click into that and then click get function URL, which will get me the full URL that I can use to test. I'll go back to the tab, paste it in, and we'll see what we get. Awesome, we're greeted with the welcome screen, so it looks like the function is working. Right now, you can see that the function is connecting to the live test instance of RavenDB, 
And what you probably want is to connect it to your own instance, so we'll do that next. In order to do that, we have to update the app settings in two different places, locally and within Azure. Let's start local. In VS Code, I'll open up the app settings.json. You can see that there is a Raven settings object with the cluster URLs setting and database name. In this demo, I'm going to use RavenDB Cloud, so you would have to get the same connection information and certificates from your own instance if you need to use the self-hosted version. I've opened up my RavenDB Cloud dashboard here, and I have the cluster URLs, and those can be copied, which I'll paste back into the URLs app setting. If you have multiple nodes in the cluster, the URLs can be added to the array. The other value to update is database name, which is the default database to connect to in your cluster. You do want to make sure that this database exists, otherwise you're going to get an error when you try to run this later. Now we need to handle authentication with client certificates. There are two primary ways to do this, using a physical certificate file or using the Windows certificate store. As you can guess, the Windows Certificate Store only works on Windows-based Azure functions, not Linux. Microsoft might add support for the Certificate Store to Linux-based functions in the future, but right now it's not supported. I'll show you both of those methods next. There is one other way, which is by using Azure Key Vault, but that costs extra and is covered in the documentation if you'd like to use that. Okay, so first we need to get our client certificate so that we can use it locally and then upload it to Azure. So we'll go back in the cloud dashboard, click the download certificate button, which opens up a modal, and you can click the download client certificate package button to download a package containing the client certificates we can use to connect. This is a cluster certificate and has very wide permissions to allow you to manage the cluster. For production, it would be better to generate a specific client certificate with limited access. But for this demo, it doesn't really matter which certificate you use as long as it has access to the database. Once the package is downloaded, extract it to an easy to access location, but take care not to accidentally extract it inside the repo because not all the files are password protected. The only file we need right now is the PFX file without a password. Copy it to your local Git repository, I'll just drag it into VS Code like this. Next, I'll add a new app settings.development.json, which will only be used in our local development environment. I'll add a new Raven settings section, and then I'll add another setting cert file path with a path relative to the root of the repo to the PFX file. This will be merged with the other app settings file. If you do intend to use the password protected PFX, you'll want to use the .NET Secrets tool to handle storing the password safely. More on that in the accompanying docs. Next, we need to copy the PFX file to the output directory, otherwise the function won't be able to find it. I'll open up the csproj file and add a new include section to copy the PFX. Okay, this should be all we need locally, so I'll start the function and we'll try opening the browser to see if the connection is working. Awesome, it's connected. And now we have to make it work in Azure. So I'll commit my changes and push them. This should trigger a new deployment, which we'll need to wait for. Once it finishes successfully, I'll go back to the deployed Azure function URL and hit refresh. Hmm, well, it still says it's connecting to the live test instance of RavenDB. Why is that? Well, it's because we are actually overriding the app settings in the Azure portal. So it's not using what we just put into the app settings.json file. Let's go take a look. In the portal with our Azure Functions app open, I'll go to the configuration blade. If I scroll down, you'll see some app settings listed here. Since these are loaded as environment variables, you'll notice the naming convention of the double underscore to represent the dot notation in JSON. We'll edit two of the settings first, the URLs and the database name. I'll click to show what the value is right now. Then I'll click edit, type in the values and save the changes. Now, what about these cert thumbprint and website load certificates settings? Those are used to load a certificate from the Windows certificate store. But before we update those, we need to upload our certificate to Azure first. In the menu under settings, go to the certificates blade and then the bring your own certificates tab. Click add and specify you want to upload a cert. Browse to the PFX file, this time you'll also need to copy the password from the provided password.txt file, which is next to the certificate. Paste the password into the required input. 
I'm going to give it a more friendly name, and then I'll click validate to check that everything's good, and finally, I'll add it. Once uploaded, the interface will list the new certificate and its thumbprint, so we can copy that. Now back in the configuration settings, I'm going to paste that thumbprint into both the Raven settings cert thumbprint and the website load certificates app settings. Note that you could also use an asterisk here to load every certificate, but it's better to explicitly list the thumbprint so you don't accidentally make certs available to the code that shouldn't be. Now save the settings to restart the function app with the changes. Okay, here's the finale. Did it work? Let's find out. Going back to the function URL and refreshing, yes, we are connected to our RavenDB cloud cluster. The last thing I'll show you is how to clean up the Azure resources, especially if you don't intend to use them so they don't incur extra costs. Back in the portal, going to the overview blade, you could simply stop the app. Now, if you're using the app service plan instead of the consumption plan, you're going to still incur costs since that's reserved compute. Just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything by clicking the resource group and then click delete resource group, which you'll need to confirm. Once you do, Azure will remove all the resources we just created using the deployment template at the start of the video. To learn more about using RavenDB with Azure Functions, there are links to resources below and we look forward to hearing about all the cool stuff you're building. Thanks.